Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about the bright field microscopy basics and details. We are going to talk about the principles behind bright field microscopy and also bright field microscopy applications and their uses. Now, in this series of videos, we've been talking about the microscopy principles and technique, right? So, what about this bright field microscopy? Now, bright field microscopy is widely used microscopy for seeing the biological specimens and samples that we use in the lab uh, as well as in the practicals and as per somebody hobbyist in the home purpose, you can also use the bright field microscopy. Now, if you know the basics of microscopy, there are two important factors to a microscope. One is the magnification and the other one is the resolution. So, if a microscope has a better magnification and a better resolution, both are equally good, then we call that microscope to be the best, right? But what happens is that if we increase the magnification power, the resolution gets distorted and the images that we obtain become less sharp and blunt. So, in order to get a better resolution, the magnification is kept to a certain level for the light microscope that we use for the practical as well as for uh, professional purposes using light beam as a illumination source. So in the bright field microscopy, the idea is to keep the magnification scale till 600 to like 450, 400 to 600 times of the normal size of the sample. And that works quite well because if your sample has uh, the magnification of 600 times, we can still visualize them pretty well without much of a problem. Okay. Now, here we are going to talk about the bright field microscopy basics and details. So, what about the bright field? Remember, bright field. You know, people may confuse this term with so many things because there are different types of microscopes and all. But in bright field microscopy, uh, remember one thing, this is a type of light light microscopy that we are talking about light microscope that we are talking about okay light microscope means for a microscope that uses light for illuminating the sample or, or the slide which is present so the illumination is from the light okay uh, the visible light now what happens in bright field microscopy is that uh, if you look at the slide and the field of view, the field of view looks something like this. So generally the field of view is always looking something like a uh, round section and the round field of view we are going to see a white, white background and whatever sample is present, let's assume that there are some, uh, some samples, bacteria for example. This is a sample that we are looking at. And the sample looks dark. Okay, so this is the sample. Sample is dark compared to the background. This is called the bright field microscopy. That's why we call it bright field because the, the background is very bright, white, and the, the specimen is darker in color. In it, okay, that is bright field. Now, why is so? It's because in bright field microscopy. We have a source, light source, and the light source is passing through the condenser lens and then through the diaphragm. Diaphragm can control the aperture, that means the amount of light that can enter uh, the specimen slide or not. Okay, So, through that diaphragm enters into the slide, hits the slide and then from slide, the light again comes to the objective. Via objective, it comes to the eyepiece or ocular lens and then finally, we can see uh, the sample. Now, imagine... The moment light is passing through this slide, the slide is made up of glass, right? So the light is passing through the glass. If there is no sample, if there is no specimen in the slide, then all the light easily pass through the glass slide, okay? There is no scattering, there is no diffraction at all. So all the lights are simple non-diffracted light because there is no specimen to diffract any light, right? Who does the diffraction? The specimen does the diffraction. Because specimen has different density components in the body that cause the diffraction. So without specimen, no diffraction, all non-diffracted light, they are gathered by objective then finally projected to the eye. And we can clearly see that via the eye piece lens. So that becomes totally bright background. 
because it's heavily lit background okay heavily lit background so if i draw a view with or without sample you will see something like that this is very bright and this is a bright background but dark sample this is how you characterize the two different situation and let's say this is the dark sample that we are seeing now when we put the sample why we see the sample in the dark color because when we put the sample the light is passing through this slide again and the sample diffract that light so now instead of uh, I mean, having the non diffracted light we also have diffracted light so now you have diffracted diffracted plus non diffracted light but in case of uh, without the sample situation you have only a non diffracted light that's why the background is very bright and heavily lit but when you put the sample cause of the diffraction we have diffracted plus non diffracted light both so when the non diffracted light hits that the background brightly colored heavily lit and then the diffracted lights coming from the sample so they are going to be darker because they don't have uh, i mean they are not blank in that position right diffraction took place that's why it changes the angle of the light right now the question is in this bright field microscopy the sample that we put they don't have their own color right because even though they have their own color the amount of light illuminating them is so much high that it is not capable to visualize them entirely in that bright background field okay so what happens here as this uh, samples as the samples uh, are present there okay and the light is passing through them so we are not going to see any distinctive image of this uh, of the sample of the specimen in the slide right due to the nature of the light that is passing by okay so that's why it's very important for us to stain the sample to put color in the sample the reason behind it is that the light that is going through the sample the biological sample they are not going to absorb it because it's a common it's, it's a white light it's not a specific wavelength of the light or something it's a white light right so if we divide then we will get seven different uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum of the light so once the light is passing through the sample the sample is not absorbing light on its own thus it is colorless and it, we cannot view the contrast of the image and we cannot specify the image from the background that is known as the contrast okay we cannot separate the image sample from the background so that's why we need to add some contrast enhancing some contrast enhancing material to our sample it's very important and that is con constant enhancing material is known as stain right remember always whenever you are looking something under the microscope we stain it at least with some kind of stain whether it's uoc whether it's methylene blue we stain it why we stain it because the stain acts as a contrast enhancing material because the moment stain is present inside the cell because the different components of the cell are not going to receive stain at the same amount nucleus is going to receive stain maximum retain the stain maximum so nucleus will be very darkly pigmented organelles will be dark pigmented and the cytosol will not that dark pigmented so based on the presence of the stain and, and the moment we put the stain the cells uptake the stain and then we wash it out so the amount of stain they need to take they will already take that and then we watch that sample under the microscope and when you are watching the stain sample under the microscope what we can see is that the visible light can be absorbed by the sample because of the stain due to the presence of the stain uh, the sample can absorb uh, absorb the visible light and as they absorb the visible light in here they are going to become darker in this bright field why we call it dark although uh light is passing through that but it's not like the background background is very white heavy lit condition okay and compared to that the sample will be darker so that is uh, how you are going to see a bright field microscopy sample very bright background and the dark colored uh, places where that color can be red that color can be blue 
that red color mostly uh, between red, blue and green. These are the three colors that we usually see. The type of uh, color coding compound that we use based on that we see these colors. Okay. And if your sample has its own color, you can also sometimes use that for enhancing the contrast. For example, spirogyra or algae. If you are seeing algae, spirogyra under the microscope, you don't need to stain them always. If you are watching them, uh, then and there, not fix, fixing them for future use, you can still see that without any kind of staining because they have chlorophyll. And they have so much amount of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll itself is a pigment, the green pigment. So, it can uh, enhance uh, the contrast between the background and the, uh, the and the sample so you can see that so this is the idea of the bright field microscope so in bright field microscope uh, the last thing that i want to show you is uh, how the structure is organized so i can show you that this is the light source and from the light source this is so i'm drawing them schematically so that you understand the process this is condenser and the condenser diaphragm set and that becomes a slide this is a slide and then there are this, this is objective and this is eyepiece. So this is, uh, these are the different steps of a bright field microscope. Then you are going to see that the light is coming in, okay. And then this is the point of the sample. This is how you can see it. So this is the source of light, condenser and diaphragm, sample, objective, ocular or eyepiece. And this is where your eye is to see it, right? So this is how uh, the light travels. And uh, the thing is that the, the light source provides the light and it illuminates the sample specimen completely, thoroughly. There is no blockage to the light, okay? All the light move through this case. So, the sample can scatter some light if the sample scatters some light or may not. So, some of the light goes like this, some of the light goes like this. Okay. So, both this light, some light may not be captured but most of the light are captured and that is then transferred, feed it to the ocular and finally you can see the image in, your, uh, in front of your eye. That is the bright field microscope. Now the biggest problem with bright field microscopy, uh, there are advantages and disadvantages both for the bright field microscopy. The advantages are the bright field microscopy, the setup is very simple. There are few components to the microscope and very simple. Okay, And uh, you can see uh, objects very easily with, with, with simple staining processes only. Okay, You can see them. And one more advantage is that you are going to see the overall magnified version of uh, uh, structures of cells as well as bacteria and many more things with the help of that so which is uh, which is kind of that's why we widely use white, uh, this white field microscopy because of the simplicity okay but there is a dis there are disadvantages as well the disadvantage of this uh, technique is that that this technique re depends uh, on the staining process so without staining this process is not possible so you need to stain the sample in order to visualize them under the microscope, right? In the bright field microscopy mode. So staining is very, very important, which is a totally different set of process that you need to must run along with uh, the conventional microscopy process, okay? That's totally due. And, and one big problem with this is that uh, without straining, you cannot, without staining, you cannot visualize the sample properly. And you will have lack of contrast and the size and shape of uh, the structures of the sample is not clearly visible with the help of the bright field microscopy. Or the image looks very good if you stain them uh, with different colors, bicolor, or tricolor images are, are uh, gathered quite easily and it's possible to gather that. But the problem is that uh, without proper staining you cannot see that and sometimes structures of some uh, or, uh, organelles. You cannot see the structure of organelles even let's say for a uh, protozoa which are cilia through the body. These extra cytosolic structures are quite difficult to visualize with the help of bright field microscopy due to the very bright background because these are very very thin appendages that comes out from the cell. So to visualize this extracellular uh, structures or you can see the extracytoplasmic structures uh, you need to utilize other mode of microscopy, preferably the dark field microscopy 
where only a particular amount of light is allowed to pass through there and a particular uh, uh, fragment of light is cut uh, to receive or to reach the objective and that's going to prevent the way we are looking into the process of microscopy and that's going to give us totally different kind of image without the requirement of staining okay so that's about the bright field microscopy so whatever disadvantage the bright field microscopy has means you know we need to stain that so we need to kill that specimen uh, in order to stain them in order to heat fix them and also we are using very bright field means we are putting the light source sometimes it can heat up the sample and can damage the specimen so these things are disadvantages of the bright field microscopy. So to counteract this disadvantages, we have other techniques like dark field microscopy or we also have phase contrast microscopy. So if you want to know those phase contrast microscopy and dark field microscopy, stay tuned to the loop into the series of this video where we are going to talk about them in the next videos. So that's all about the bright field microscopy. I believe you understand the process quite well. If you like the bright field microscope video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that. Thank you.